Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. So all the new subscribers who have joined me recently, welcome, welcome. I was going to talk about this article, which I saw in the Grey Zone. And basically, they're saying how British intelligence may have been involved in the Ukrainian bridge, the Kirsch Bridge blowing up. And they have kind of discussed how and why uh, the British got involved the evidence that they have but i have read the article i must admit there isn't any smoking gun uh, that british were involved but i wouldn't be surprised to be honest uh, it is something that they would actually do and you know there's a lot of um, coincidences a lot of um, trails and uh, that the british could have done it why and uh, when they would have done it uh, things like the stamp um, that was on the wall in the Ukraine where people were taking selfies. Looks like that stamp was done way in advance because you can't just blow up the bridge and have that stamp on the wall done straight away. So there were obviously plans to blow up the bridge and the British intelligence probably were involved in thinking about how to blow it up with the Ukrainians. Um, obviously, they haven't said at any point that they would have used suicide bombing tactics. I think that's pretty low if they did. Uh, like I said, I couldn't find any smoking guns, but I am, you know, it's one of those things. It's like the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipeline that got blown up. We all know that the US was involved in some way or other, but end of the day, there's no evidence of it. And, and in a court of law, you need evidence, you need hard Truths, you need proof, things like that. You, you know, you, you might, if you're in a court and you, you know that the murderer did it, you know that he's guilty, but the thing is, you have to prove it. And that's the issue, really. And, you know, Sweden has said to Russia uh, they can go in and do their own investigations. But, you know, like I said, I said on the um, Duran, there's no point going to a murder scene two weeks later and investigating it. You know, anyone that Anyone could have gone to the murder scene, cleaned up all the evidence, cleaned up all traces of, you know, traces of like proof that they did it. Um, there's no point going in there a couple of weeks later and saying, all right, you know what, we've cleaned you up. Now you go and do your own investigation. Doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, we, we all know um, probably the British were involved in some point, but, you know, end of the day, we need proof. So this uh, this video I'm going to be making is basically about British um, targets. Uh, if there is a nuclear war with Russia, and I'm not saying there will be, but in case there is, and there are some articles out, basically, some top secret articles, which just I managed to get hold of. And these are the ones, and you can see these um, top secret um, articles about all of the British targets that the Russians would um, target if it came to a nuclear attack, and I'm gonna basically I'm gonna be basically making it easy for you. Uh, in total, there are 106 possible nuclear targets in uh, UK, but I'm probably gonna be talking about the top 10 um, because. I don't want to go through the, all of the targets. Um, I'm just going to talk about probably the most important ones, and then we can kind of go from there. So before I go into the list of targets, and obviously you've seen from the picture here, this will be one of the first targets. This is one of the most advanced radar systems we have in England. This is held in North Yorkshire. And before I kind of talk about it, I want to kind of say that this is only theoretical, by the way. Um, this is no means warmongering or i'm not using any scare tactics that this is going to happen this is purely my views uh, on what the major targets would be in, in in england and i gotta say you just have to look at what russia is doing to ukraine and and you have to understand that they're going to try and avoid as much uh, civilian deaths as possible and this is why um, Russia is fighting Ukraine the way they are fighting. They are trying to avoid as much civilian deaths as possible. Uh, they are not trying to destroy the infrastructure as much. And they are pretty much showing off their power without killing 
the whole population. And this is probably what they're going to do with UK. They're going to be hitting all major military sites. And I was thinking about, there are a couple of um, NATO offices and you've got the MI5 offices in London. I doubt if Russia would use nukes in anywhere near London because of the huge casualty rate, huge amounts of people that will be killed. Um, so offices around London, NATO offices, MI5 offices, I think Russia will probably hit them with conventional weapons. So it's going to be a mix of conventional weapons and nuclear if they if if we kind of went ahead in a nuclear exchange. So this will be the first target. It's called the RAF Flying Dells in North Yorkshire. This provides a continuous ballistic missile early warning system to the UK and US governments, ensuring a surprise missile attack which cannot succeed. So if they wanted to attack, this will probably be the first target in the UK. And once you take this out, and I believe I, I did some research on this, I believe this is the only anti-ballistic early warning missile system in the UK and I don't think they have any other backups. Um, they're going to hit this with the nuke to make sure it's completely destroyed and all of the command and control centers that are scattered around it will also be destroyed as well and they will want to make sure they hit this with the nuke so make sure it's never ever operational ever again and also nobody goes near it. So this will be the first target. So the second major target uh, for any attack, and this will be a nuclear attack, by the way, because they'll want to make sure this gets destroyed. So this will be HNMB, which is the largest naval base in UK. And this is um, somewhere in Scotland. And this is definitely the most um, advanced naval base that England has got. It houses nuclear submarines. It houses nuclear weapons, uh, lots of nuclear technology in there as well. Uh, all of the naval ships and stuff. So it's a huge, huge base. And if Russia take this out, this will be a huge blow to UK. And this uh, this is why I believe this will be the second major target uh, when Russia does attack. And they will need to make sure they hit it with a nuke and completely take it out and all of the surrounding um, command and com control centers, all the surrounding submarines, ships, anything military-wise. In terms of casualties, we're looking at between three to 5,000 people dead and up to 40,000 people injured, uh, we're looking at. So this will be a huge, huge loss um, if Britain loses this. The next target would be something called um, the Royal Air Force Lakenheath, and this is near the south of England. And this house is, some of the most advanced military jets they have the f-35s and many other advanced military jets in there they also train a lot of um, new recruits train them in uh, how to uh, fly fly these um you know f-35s they've got the u.s command and control centers in there so this is a huge raf base and this will be a huge blow if it gets taken out and i believe this will be the next target for the russians and again, they will probably hit it with one nuclear weapons, causing probably between three to five thousand killed and probably up to twenty to thirty thousand injured. And this will be a huge blow if it gets taken out. Um, this will severely impact Britain's um, air force. The next one will be the um, Royal Naval Naval Base in Portsmouth. And again, this has got some some of the most cutting edge um, naval ships um, housed in that um, area. And this is one of the biggest ones in UK as well. And it also houses the England's aircraft carrier as well. So this would be a huge blow if this gets taken out along with its aircraft carrier. So again, Russia will want to hit this with a nuke, not only to take out um, all the material, uh, all of the kind of military installations but you'll also want to take out the you know aircraft carrier in case it's still there obviously uk has got many other military bases um, plotted all over the uk 
but they're not all going to be hit with nuclear weapons. I believe those are probably going to be hit with conventional weapons and ballistic missiles. However, I'm going to now talk about data centers. These data centers will probably be hit by nukes because Russia will want to make sure all of this data uh, gets destroyed. Um, so it really hampers, you know, command and control and intelligence as well. And, you know, Britain has got a lot of data centers, but they'll probably take out the most important ones. And there's a big list of data centers in this website. And smaller ones they'll probably take out with conventional weapons. And also they'll want to take out any backup data centers as well, because nowadays in UK, you, you don't have everything in one data center. You basically have backup um, solutions as well. You have kind of standby solutions, standby data centers. So Russia will make sure will need to make sure they take out those as well. So the next target Russia will probably target with nukes are oil refineries refineries in UK. Because once you take out the oil refineries, you know, there's not really much UK can do if, if for a counterattack because they need oil um, to be able to mount a counter attack against Russia. And, you know, they'll, they'll probably take out these oil refineries and also any LNG terminals as well, uh, any oil storage places as well. But not all of them will be hit by nukes, but I believe that they will start hitting the biggest refineries in UK with nukes. They'll want to make sure these are never used. And they'll probably use um, a nuke on pr probably one or two of the LNG uh, terminals as well. I believe Britain has got about two um, LNG terminals. And uh, I'm not sure if they're building some more, but um, yeah, once you take out these uh, refineries, LNG terminals and gas and oil storage places, they really, you know, hampers Britain's ability to fight back. The next thing they will take out are all of these major ports uh, in and around UK. Uh, they will want to make sure that Britain does not get any, um, you know, weapon shipments from United States and the rest of Europe. Uh, so they want to make sure these ports, uh, all, all major ports are taken out in UK. Even the small ones will be taken out by conventional but I believe the major ones will probably be taken out by nuclear. Uh, they'll probably want to use nuclear because they want to probably destroy the whole port and make it completely disabled so they will never ever be able to be operated on again and you know take in um, deliveries in terms of um, military and hardware and stuff. They might keep one or two ports open for humanitarian purposes. Um, but you know, I'm not sure which ones. So, so yeah, the ports are going to be a major target for the Russians. So you can see the full list here. There's around 23 naval RAF bases, 14 USAF bases, 10 radar stations, eight military control centers, seven naval communication centers, six naval bases. So all of these will probably be destroyed. Either they'll use um, a nuclear or they'll use conventional weapon, depends on the size, or they'll probably use a bit of both. Um, I'm not sure. They'll probably want to also um, destroy some of the infrastructure as well. Uh, they'll probably target the Channel Tunnel, mainly because they don't want um, Britain to get any sorts of um, reinforcements coming through the, uh, from, coming through the tunnel. And um, they'll probably destroy lots of um, like uh, power stations as well. Um, same way they're, they're what they're doing to Ukraine, they'll probably also target any high value targets, things like 10 Downing Street and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, and they probably won't hit anywhere in London with a nuclear, but they'll probably hit 10 Downing Street with the conventional weapons, but there's hundreds of these, even thousands of these targets um, scattered around all over UK. These are kind of high value targets um, where there's going to be um, high value people like the president, generals and MPs and, and things like that. So they probably want to take out the parliament 
and a few other things as well. Um, but at the end of the day, this is only just theoretical, guys. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Uh, but the way Britain is getting involved in this conflict with um, with Russia o over Ukraine, you know, they are really asking for trouble. And you got people like Liz Truss and openly saying they're gonna they're not scared of using getting into a nuclear war with Russia and and even the kind of the leaders of the armed services is also saying the same thing. So rather than de-escalate things, you know, it seems like they're just escalating things. And if they are involved in this Crimean bridge attack, you know, that could seriously escalate things to another level. Uh, I, I really hope they, was, they were not involved. Um, obviously, it looks like they could have been, but I really seriously hope they, they are not, because this is not going to bode well for the UK. So that's all I have time for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now.